apologize for all the ambient noise you're hearing in the background. I have a lasagna in the oven and the fan is making all kind of noise there. But you can't have the ultimate bhaji. And bhaji is pretty much spinach, any sort of spinach recipe or claim to be the ultimate bhaji recipe without going all out. With the exception of taro leaves or dashing bush leaves, yeah. We just had another snowstorm and all you know that she ain't growing in Canada. So we've got pak choy, we've got Swiss chard, we've got your everyday spinach over here, and here we've got Malaba spinach or Pui Baji. So what I'm gonna recommend you guys do is unwrap everything. And if you can only get two or three, or if you can get all, I mean to say rock it with all. But what you want to do, you want to break it apart like so. And you notice the dirt inside here for the pak choy. You want to give that a good wash. The same with the Swiss chard. And you'll notice the bottom stems here, they're discolored. So we're going to trim that off, take off maybe about a centimeter of the bottom, toss that out. The same over here with the um, pak choy. The spinach, well, you got to give it a good wash. And if you want to trim some of the sort of stem area off, that is fine as well too. All of this really, and I must impress on you all to give it a good wash. For the Malabar spinach or poi bhaji, we will take the leaves, break the leaves, and the stems, you can chop up the stems very small as well too, they will work. Any sort of discoloration like all here, you would trim that out and toss it out. If you guys want a video specifically on prepping these, um, drop a comment down below and I'll do it for you guys. One more little thing I want you guys to do. Keep the stems from the Swiss chard separate from the leafy parts, as well as the pak choy. This and this will take longer to cook. So what we will do is chop this up into small pieces. So you would cut all the way down, maybe three times and then across maybe a centimeter or so. And we would keep it separate and we would start by cooking the bottom parts, which is the more tough parts. So I have some work ahead of me. I'm gonna give everything a rough chop, including the spinach and the Malabar spinach. And we will get to cooking. So here I have the bottom parts of the pak choy and I told you maybe about a centimeter chopped up and the Swiss chard. So I'm going to move that aside and show you what I did here. And for the Malabar spinach or the choy bhaji, all I did was I gave that a rough chop with the uh, Swiss chard, the pak choy and the spinach. It's cut into ribbons maybe about a centimeter or so thick. So this is all prepped, it's washed, it's drained. There's still gonna be quite a bit of water in there, but that is fine. It being such a classic old school recipe, something my mom would do for us, and her mom before her, and her mom before her, except it was never the ultimate because they never used multiple layers of bhaji or spinach. I thought I'd pull out the old dutchie pot, my old iron pot there. First thing first, we've got two and a half tablespoons of olive oil in there on a medium heat and I have here about one cup of prepared salt fish that is salted pollock and if you want to see how to prepare that because it's been soaked in boiling water to remove the majority of the salt this one here is boned or boneless I still went through and I picked out any sort of bones that I sometimes here they still have bones in there and you're not trying to choke on one of the bones there no but if you're looking for a video on how to prepare it, check out my food FAQ channel. I've got a video in there. The whole idea of adding the saltfish here into that hot olive oil. Now I'm using olive oil. You can use vegetable oil, canola oil, corn oil, um, coconut oil, totally up to you. The whole idea here is to flavor the oil with the flavors of that saltfish. And that thing there is classic, classic Caribbean. What we're gonna do, we're gonna fry the saltfish in the oil here, but after about four minutes, we're gonna take all of the saltfish out, and this is why I have my slotted spoon here because I want the oils to remain in the pot. We're gonna set it aside, and we're gonna add it back, well, introduce it back into the pot later, simply because, and this is a tip my mom gave me, um, later on, when you're eating, when you're cooking it, I'm sorry, the saltfish tends to, to break apart and fall apart and then you don't get that nice little crunch of saltfish at the end. So we're gonna add it back to the very end, but we're trying to pull out that flavor and get it nice and crispy. 
Yeah, and it really won't take long. As soon as you start seeing the crispy little edges here, the little dark edges, it's golden. So just gonna shake that around, drip out most of that oil, and I'm just gonna put it onto a side plate just to add back later. Then I'm gonna add my onion, and my heat is still on medium. Just gonna move that around like so. And I'm just gonna quickly show you a couple other ingredients we're gonna add in there. The green ones and the orange and the red one here, those are what's called pimento peppers. This one here is a scotch bonnet pepper. If you cannot get access to scotch bonnet pepper, you don't really have to use it. It's up to you. I like it spicy. But you can use habanero, jalapeno, um, whatever you, you like using. But I might love my scotch bonnet. These are pimento peppers. I grow these in the summertime in my garden. And I freeze them. So the sort of sheen you see in there is because I had to wash them to kind of um, take the the frost off it. I'm gonna give these a chop and toss them in there. No heat whatsoever, but a ton of flavor. It's nice and soft now, so what we're gonna do is add all of that pepper in there. That is the scotch bonnet along with the um, pimento peppers. And I also like going in with a ton of garlic. You cannot add too much garlic in this dish. Um, in my humble opinion, the more garlic in there, the better it is. And the other sort of flavor ingredients, and you notice these layers and layers of flavor. We started off with the salt fish, went in with the onion, we went in with the peppers, we went in with the garlic, and some fresh ground black pepper. And all we're gonna do now is reduce the heat to medium low, and we're gonna let that cook for about four minutes just until everything softens up and we have that lovely base of flavor there. You cannot have the ultimate bhaji recipe without it banging with flavor. And that is what we are doing. The last thing we want to do is burn the garlic. So after about three or four minutes, this is when we're gonna start adding all of the stems into the pot and the simple reason why we're adding it, I'm gonna raise my heat back up to medium. We're adding that first, as mentioned earlier, it is because it will take longer to cook. Yeah? The other thing I like adding at this point too is salt, but also keep in mind that, and I'm using sea salt, you can use whatever salt you like using. Keep in mind that the remnants of salt in the salt fish that we use, whether it's salted cod or pollock or whatever it is, will season the dish as well. So hold back on the salt here. Near the end, you can always taste it and adjust it accordingly. This will wilt down, so don't fret at this point if it's looking crowded and you realize, wait, I have more bad. You could go in the pot there, boy. No, Uncle Chris lead in all here correctly. I've had it covered for about four and a half minutes. Just to let it sort of steam saute in there. And the other sort of flavor I want to add in there is coconut milk. And this is where I'm gonna start adding all of the different spinach. I'm gonna start with the um, pak choy first because it still has some little tough spots there, the thing, and I'm gonna add the Swiss chard. And I'm just gonna keep building and it's just gonna start wilting and going down. Just keep stirring it. It will wilt down as soon as it gets in contact with the heat on the bottom there, so it's important that you keep stirring, plus we want to introduce all the flavors that we started off with to everything. Notice how it already went down, we're just gonna keep adding more and more. It's been 15 minutes since we started adding the spinach into the pot here, the spinach or the bhaji. Um, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna leave it on that high rate of cooking there, but we're gonna remove the lid. We won't put back the lid on there simply because there's a lot of liquid and I want to burn off all that liquid and I don't want to do this injustice by overcooking it. But it is important that we get back to the oils that we started off with. And when I say oils, it's the olive oil plus the coconut milk will generate its own oil as well because it's very fatty. So lid off and yo, rapid boil now. As this cooks down now and we burn off all that liquid, um, you can taste it for salt, adjust it, but remember, 
um, it will intensify in flavor once we remove all that liquid. So if you want to hold off another five minutes to taste it and adjust it, that's cool. But I like going in when I have liquid because I get more flavor out of the liquid and I can I can estimate how much salt I need. The other thing I wanted to mention, if you had okra or okra, depending on where you're from, that's how you would say it, you wanted to add some okra in there, by all means, rock that okra in there. It's been about 12 minutes on a vigorous boil. For the most part, all of the liquid is gone. There's still quite a bit. Well, there's still remnants of that liquid. But here is where we're gonna introduce back the salted cod to the pot. And we're just gonna mix that in. So as it cooks down now, the last four or five minutes, it will hit back that punch of flavor at the end here. And you will still get pieces of that salted cod. Now if salted cod, I keep saying cod, um, pollock, but if salt fish is not your thing, you can go with smoked meat, you can go with ham, smoked turkey, and or you can leave it out altogether and do a totally vegan um, dish if you want, you know? But I still gotta burn off all of that liquid. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me email address down here i mean trying to tell people the email address them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it and tag me on instagram at caribbean pod i really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today Irene, Irene. it will take a further 10 minutes 10 to 15 minutes actually after we added the salt fish there for it to come down to where i want it to be there's a slight little bit of liquid on the bottom there. That's gonna burn off when the residual heat. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com, the ultimate bhaji, and bhaji is just a word we use, and I guess it's based on our uh, ties to India via the, um, the indentured laborers um, that came to the Caribbean after slavery was abolished. Um, bhaji or spinach, we use four different types of spinach and we built layers and layers of flavor. Chris here at CaribbeanPub.com, always a pleasure having you guys here in the kitchen with me. I'm gonna let this cook for another three minutes, shut off the stove, make some roti. Irie, Irie.